Hello, it's me, Sam Sadler, here with Curtain Call Reviews at the Battersea Art Centre. Come with me to speak to the cast of a brand new musical, Your Light in April. So this show started uh, a few years after Death Note. And again, my son, who introduced me to Death Note, introduced me to this piece. And he said, Dad, watch it on Netflix. And when you finish crying, <laughs> call me. I watched it, I finished crying, I called him, I said I'm doing it, and I wrote the score that weekend. It was so inspiring, and it just, it hit me here, and it was easy to kind of write. Watching piano keys go up and go down Bonnie and Clyde Frank said our next two shows should be Death Note and Your Line April and uh, we didn't decide which one to do first and it turned out we did Death Note first and I said to him Death Note sort of appealed to my sort of Spielbergian excited fantasy side and this really appealed to my heart and I think it will make you laugh but then it's going to really really make you cry. It's about bridges from earth to heaven. It's about bridges from childhood to adulthood. It's a love letter to music, the healing power of music, the love of music, the memories music makes in our life that stays with us forever. When your heart found the courage to believe, we brought colors to life through the rain. Oh, I hope think it's a three generation show. You can bring your kids and you can bring your parents and I think that's there's magic in that. And musically it's as unique as a score as I've ever done because it really mixes famous classical music with with my music. You know these are kids who are in performing and competing in classical music which is represented by Beethoven and Mozart and Debussy and Rachmaninoff etc. But they're kids so they think in terms of contemporary pop music which made the score really unique. Where's my superhero? Miss your supernatural way. I'll be here for you forever. Let's go meet the moon together. Where's my superhero? Lift me, carry me away. Fly through my open window. My name is Jung Si Yong and I play Kosei Arima. Can you tell us a bit about your character? Kosei is a piano prodigy. He grew, grew up with an incredible talent for the piano. He was pushed by his mum a lot um, and his mum was quite harsh, which kind of gave him a lot of trauma and grief. His mum died and after her death, he lost the ability to hear music, um, which made him distance himself from the piano. And then he meets Kaori, who inspires him and uh, gets him out of his shell and back to playing the piano and changes his life. I am joined here with Rumi Sutton. Can you tell me about your character? I can indeed. My character is called Kaori Miyazono, uh, which is a violinist who plays with a lot of heart and soul um, in a musical world where that is not always encouraged, where uh, musicians play by the dot. They play everything as written, and that is how they're judged. And she comes in, all guns blazing, with her soul 
on her strings and her bow and um, really inspires um, Kose Arima, who's played by the wonderful Jongsi. And uh, he's gone through such a traumatic experience with music growing up that roots back to his childhood. And Kaori really uplifts him and helps put him back on a path. <laughs> music stunning with his amazing team of, of um, well, everyone it's I can't I can't I can't be more grateful for this I play the voices that I write for I have been very very fortunate and lucky in my career to write for some of the great voices in the world so to me that's the instrument my job is to frame them it's just like a For those who haven't seen the show, what can we expect? I think it's the first time that we have a musical that features and centres around classical music so heavily and done in such a beautiful way. The music is honestly without repeating Frank too much, I mean I'm literally going to repeat his word soulful <laughs> because it is so soulful. It's a very heartbreaking but uplifting story at the same time that I feel like a lot of people can connect with, um, especially about you know, uh, overcoming grief and trauma through a shared connection and a shared love for music. It, it's not just about the words, it's not just about the notes, it's about the culmination of it all and the way obviously Nick's directed it. Each individual aspect of the music can tell the story in its own way and then put it together and it is magical, it really is beautiful and I feel so blessed to sing these, these songs. And in English for the first time as well, mm. that's so cool. Because the script was originally written in Japanese, uh, we've been working with uh, Renard, book writer, translating, back translating from Japanese back to English. We, we worked for like three months on the script, uh, going back and forth. Were you familiar with kind of Japanese culture before you started doing the show? What, I, I have friends that are from Japan, so my knowledge of Japanese culture has mainly come from them because I've never actually watched Japanese manga before uh, before mm. this show, which is crazy and I know that people that do watch manga, it's, it's uh, there's so much love and passion for it and I can see why having watched Your Lie in April. So, so I, I grew up half my life in, in Southeast Asia and like I think anime and Japanese culture mm. has this huge influence there. So I kind of grew up around it. Love anime, I think it's such a beautiful medium as well. But this is the first time I've heard most of the songs in, sung in English so it's been really responding to hearing it in the room and creating something on his feet. I asked him, uh, he was doing a thing the other day, and I said, did you workshop this? No, <laughs> it was the answer. He's just making it up as he, as he went. This is the first time I've ever heard this show in English, these last few days. And it's been an extraordinary experience, because as opposed to a lot of my shows, which take many, many years to happen, this show happened so fast. The Japanese producers came to my home in New York. I played them the score. They said, we're going to do it, and because we have the number one girl idol in Japan playing the part, we'll just make a record. So I never got to make English recordings, which is what I love to do, make demos. We're kind of famous for our demos. So, and then it happened there, and now it's happening in Seoul. 
So this rehearsal period was the first time I heard in English yesterday, and, and Rumi sang a song called Perfect yesterday that I remember writing during Cyrano rehearsals in Tokyo years ago. And it's been so long, so you kind of forget the power of it because I've never heard it in English. And she sang it yesterday, and I got teary-eyed because I was like, oh, I, I didn't know how beautiful it was. Because, you know, and it was, it was a great moment. It was a great moment, which you live for those moments. That's cool. That's what music can do. Always until the morning. 